Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Thank you. Ho Chung. Okay, yeah, so I guess uh, we can start today uh, because I, I think I, I turn on <laughs> Zoom a little bit late today. Okay, so uh, let's continue. So uh, yesterday, actually, we finished iNode, right? So today, let's uh, look at Uh, directory, okay. Another important part. Uh, so I, I think I briefly introduced the idea. Uh, you also five minutes right yesterday, okay. So some student uh, say, oh, this is very confused. Okay, yeah, that's the purpose, right? <laughs> okay. So uh, let's go to directory directly, okay. So yesterday, basically, we talked about um, uh, inside inode, what kind of information we should have. But particularly, we talk about a mapping, uh, which is very important uh, to know where to store our data. So remember, uh, in our disk, we have uh, two regions. Uh, at least two regions, right? One re mainly two regions. One region is inode region, which is used to store inode. Each file uh, is associated with inode. So inode is our internal representation for our file. Then uh, we have metadata, all metadata. Okay, our data will be stored into another region, which is our data region. It's data block region. Then in that region, actually. Uh, we have a set of data blocks. Each one is a four kilobytes. In in our, of course, this is a parameter we can tune uh, uh, in different system. But uh, generally speaking, uh, four kilobytes is the most popular configuration. Okay, so then we allocate uh, those data blocks when we need a space for a file. Then remember those data blocks number into our inode. So we have a region. Over there, we can we have um, uh, in in the ext2 uh, case, we have a twelve uh, directory pointer. So which means those uh, uh, those uh, those pointer will be used uh, to record data blocks num uh, data block numbers. Then in those data blocks, we directly store data. So we call direct pointer. Right? Then we have indirect pointer. So basically, indirect pointer means okay. Um, um, in that area, in, in our area, we talk about this, right? So I think somewhere. So here, uh, then we have EST, EXT2 case. We have a 60 bytes over there, right? Here, this, uh, what I'm talking what I'm talking about, this one, uh, this one, right? This area for mapping. Then we have a one interior pointer. Uh, this indirect pointer basically is used to uh, store its point to a block. Then inside this block, actually, we don't directly use to store data. It's used to store data pointer, right? So basically, in this way, we can use one, uh, four bytes in our inode region, then up to four megabytes. Two percent four megabytes, maximally. Uh, we also talk about um, basically we talk about uh, double indirect, right? So then double indirect, uh, triple indirect. Then correspondingly we can go to four gigabytes, four terabytes. So this is good enough. Okay. Um, then we give an example. Like uh, use a very simple example, say that if we only have one um, here, but we only have indirect point, one indirect pointer and a two direct pointer, 
the, what is the maximum size and uh, what is the corresponding data block we need to read, we need to go through when we uh, want to read from a particular offset with a certain number of bytes, uh, which is our count, right? So uh, basically that's what we discussed yesterday. So, uh, sorry, I, I think I forgot to ask you guys, can you guys hear me uh, clearly? Can you guys uh, see the slides here? Is everything normal here? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I mean, sometimes I just forget about this, but uh, I just want to make sure that uh, we are on the same page. Okay, thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, we also, provide you a simple uh, equation, you can use this for um, single indirect pointer, okay? Then uh, another issue is that uh, how to find a corresponding inode. Remember, remember when user want to use a file, user usually provide path a particular path and the file name, right? So for example, I want to find under root directory, then we have a, a suppose we have a directory called A, directory name for call A, then under this uh, directory A, we have a file called F1, okay? This is a, a path, path is here, root the directory, a, then go to directory A, under directory A, we have F1, right? So this is our path file name. Okay. This is the user needs. However, remember, on our disk, we will store our data into data region, data block region, data blocks, right? We have a set of data blocks, data, data region, right? This region is inode. Basically, we need to convert this path file name into a particular inode. After we know this inode for this particular file under this path, then Basically, suppose we know oh, the inode is 15, okay, for this one, for this file. And this is a path. Then basically, we have all information because uh, as we mentioned uh, yesterday, inside inode, we have mapping. Then we know our data. Or more specifically, we know our data blocks uh, that are used to store our data through those mapping. Uh, direct pointer, indirect pointer. Okay, then we, we, we know our data where to store. Okay. So that's uh, the issue. Then, then the, the problem is that how to, how to find the inode for this file under this uh, uh, path. Or oh, more specifically, or oh, more general, right? Given a path, and file name, then how to find the corresponding inode, okay? Inode number, right? For this file name under this path, okay? Basically, that's the issue, okay? If we solve this issue, then from the inode, we can find our data. Then uh, most uh, basic function, related to file system can be implemented. Okay, so this is your homework. I Yesterday, actually, we talked about when uh, mainly is part of your uh, uh, project, uh, one function read, main function in read actually is uh, we discussed yesterday, the mapping part. Uh, today, actually, we talk about another part of your project, okay, which is open, okay? So in your project, we also ask you to 
uh, implement another uh, system call, right? So we call it system call, right? So basically given a path file name, file name, then uh, return I know number, okay? Then how to do that? So basically that's a, that's a question, right? So I hope everyone is clear about the question. Is, is this clear? The question is clear. Because user need, user only need to know, user does not need to know the I know. User only need to know where is my file, under which direction, what is the file name. So in other words, user only need to provide path and file name. However, our internal representation for a file is inode. Then this inode is identified based on inode number. So we need to know, given this path and the file name, then how to find the corresponding inode number, right? Okay, so is this clear? Before we solve the problem, I, I hope everyone know what is the problem, right? Okay. Yeah, so and, and, and anyway, if you have a question, then please uh, um, uh, ask, or you can post your questions in the chat box. Okay, okay let, let me continue, okay. So now we, we are clear about the question, right? So then uh, basically we already have answer, <laughs> right? Because based on our previous knowledge, Okay, actually we already covered this part. Although you may not realize this, okay. So the idea is like this, okay. So this is an example, right? So let me let me first uh, go through this whole uh, whole process, okay. So how 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 we how we solve this problem? So in that case, I need to clean up here, uh, or maybe I use a. I use uh, uh, eraser, but I could not use eraser here. Yeah, so so uh, maybe I just write uh, somewhere here. Yeah. Okay, I, I write here, our whole idea, right? Our whole idea to solve this problem, okay? Then basically, oh. Yeah, I think I'm, I uh, somehow mess up here, the setting. So let me stop. Yeah, now I'm a little bit confused. Maybe I use this one. So uh, can you guys see the slides properly? Okay, thank you guys, okay. So uh, the first thing is that our first, you have to be clear. The first thing, first thing, right? First thing you have to be clear is uh, directory is a, a special file. Directory is a special file, okay? Directory is a file, okay? And directory is used for mapping. Is a special, of course, directory is a file, but the directory is a special file for mapping between file name and I know number. Of course, it's corresponding I know number. Okay, so that's first uh, very important issue. Okay, you need to notice. Okay, so basically direct, so, so in, with this design, of course we may have other design, but generally speaking, uh, all file system will utilize a, a similar approach to do this, okay. Uh, then directory file, okay, is a special file. We will use directory file to achieve this mapping between a file and his corresponding I don't number, okay? Then how we do it, okay? So first thing, 
what is directory file content? Okay, you can see directory file contain the mapping actually. Uh, basically, file name, file name for a particular entry, okay, and I know number. This is a major information stored in a directory. Okay, for example, under root, suppose we have a maybe maybe I use here to to uh, use this as an example. Okay. Given this kind of a directory under the root, we have two um, uh, directory, dr1, dr2. Then you can see, uh, basically, basically the file content for root, root directory. So, so first thing, root directory is a file, okay? Root directory. Root directory, right? What is root directory? This one. This is a root directory. Okay. This slash is root directory. Okay. Is the root directory is a file. Okay, then what is the content of this file? Content actually, we already talked about the file content of the root directory actually is the corresponding files stored under this directory, dr1, dr2, and uh, their corresponding IO number, okay? Of course, we also have dot and dot dot, okay? So basically his content is, of course, we may have other information, but the basic information we should have, we have dot, okay? Dot represent itself, current directory, okay? Dot dot is, Parent directory, okay? Then this is a file name. This is a file name here. Then another part is our I know number, correspondingly, I know number. Okay, I use I number to represent. So this basically is the content for directory file root, okay? So then of course, we also have all those files under this, directory, under root directory, we have dr1, dr2 in this case, right? So we have dr1, dr2, okay? Then correspondingly, we have I know number. Suppose, okay, root directory, our I know number is zero, suppose, okay? Yeah, so in this file, in, in, the, in the root directory file, the content will be dot, file name, I know number, zero. Okay, then dot dot. Dot dot actually is the parents directory of current directory. Current directory is root. Root has no parents. Okay, so the parents of the root directory is itself. Okay, so basically we have zero. Of course, here our assumption is that I know number of root directory is zero, right? Okay, then correspondingly suppose, okay, I know number of dr1, I know number of dr2, all those files under this uh, root directory, we have zero, one, two, okay. Then basically we can see that for this file name dr1, we will have one entry, okay, one. dr2, we have two. That's the file content of root directory, okay? This is the file content root directory, okay? So let me ask you a question, okay? Suppose, uh, uh, this root directory is a file, then where to store those uh, file content, huh? Hello guys, where to store the, the file content? Anyone? Data region, okay, great, okay. So there's no exception, right? So even this is a, a special file, uh, no matter what file, right? So if uh, we want to store data, we have to store into a data region, right? So we need to allocate a data block. Then 
if we allocate the data block, then this data block should have a data block number. Then use this data block number, then we can find the corresponding area we use to store the content. For example, this kind of mapping we are stored into uh, that data block. Okay. So this is also a very good example. Let's let's just see. Okay, suppose suppose uh, only occupy each directory file only occupy one data block for kilobytes. Okay, a uh, data block number allocated to root dr1 dr2 are zero, one, two. Okay. So could you tell me where to find our content for? Uh, root directory, okay, data block zero. Okay, of course, in this case, actually, I just uh, assume a data block zero used. Okay, so data block zero. Then we go to data block zero, then we read the content, then we, we can find out this kind of mapping, right? Is this clear? Huh? Then you, maybe at this moment, you already know the answer, okay, suppose I want to find under DR1, uh, we have file one. What is corresponding I know number for this file one? Then what should we do? We always start from root directory because that's our starting point. The I know number for root directory should be no in the beginning. Okay, then we use that uh, I know number to read the content of a root directory. Okay, so which means we will go to here to first handle this one, root directory. That root directory, as may mentioned, this is a, a file that we already know his I know number is zero. Okay. This must be no, okay, in the beginning. Then we go to the disk. Remember our disk, we have I know region, then we have uh, 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 the index based on the I know number, we can find the corresponding I know. Then I know number zero over there to find the corresponding I know. Then read this into the memory, which is the, uh, uh, which is our root directory, right? This, 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 this is a, a the I node, right? I node. The inside I node actually we will have a mapping over there. Say, oh, our first block, uh, is what? It's a data block zero. Okay, then from here, then we go to read the data block zero, then find our content here. Okay, this is a, a our data block zero content will be read into memory. Okay, then we have this kind of mapping. Then we do comparison, say, okay, do we have DR1 there? Okay, we find, oh, we have DR1. Okay, the corresponding I know number is one. Okay, then we finish, okay. We finish this part, okay. We already know, okay, uh, DR1's I know number is one. Then go to next one because we know this is one, okay, for DR1 is one. Then we go to the I know the one here. Suppose this is I know the one, I know region, I know one. Then basically we read this into the memory. This is the I know the for DR1, okay. I know the for DR1, okay. Here inside we have mapping. Remember that mapping. Basically the content, the content of DR1 should be stored in a data block. So correspondingly, in this case, actually the data block one, okay, then we go to data block one, read the data block one, okay. Then from there, then we can find the corresponding, I know number for file one, then we return, then we finish, okay. So that's the whole process. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I know maybe you guys have some questions, but, uh, Let's, uh, let's go through this example. Then uh, I hope this example can help you to understand this, uh, this, this, this question better. Okay. 
So let's let's uh, use an example uh, to see the whole process. Okay. So um, our file, our uh, directory file uh, definition, you can see there are mapping here is like this. Okay. So this is the defined by us. This is a part of file system design. Okay. Uh, in your project, we have similar this structure here. You can see here in our file system, the file name is uh, 20 characters, 20 bytes, okay? Which means uh, you cannot have a file name more than that, okay? more than 20 bytes, okay? Of course, you can change this number, right? Then another one is I know number. So in real one, you can see this is uh, uh, the system EST2. You can see they have uh, other part in order to uh, save the space, but we don't care. Okay, we only care fundamental concept and uh, make it work at this moment. Okay, so we have file name, character array, and uh, annual number correspondingly. Okay, enter this uh, particular entry. Okay, then. This one, each directory file, if we create a directory file, at least, okay, we should contain two mapping items, names dot and a dot dot, right? We already talked about this, okay? For the current directory itself and his parent directory. Um, then also the parents of the root directory is, itself, okay, because root, right? Uh, now, uh, suppose we want to looking for a specific file under a particular uh, directory, we traverse this mapping one by one, starting compare the file name with this one, with this uh, uh, file name. Then once we find it, then corresponding idle number will be returned. Okay, so basically this is how we find it. Of course, we start from the root, okay? So here, give an example. Suppose we have this directory. So root, under root, we have dr1, dr2. Then under dr1, we have file one. File one is a regular file. Other uh, root, dr1, dr2 are directory file. Okay, so basically, uh, this is a root directory. dr1, dr2 are two directory files. File one is a regular file. Okay, then our assumption is that the inode number root file, dr1, dr2, and the file one are zero, one, two, three, suppose, okay? And also each directory file only occupy one data block, okay? And uh, the data block number allocated to root dr1, dr2 are zero, one, two, okay? So in this case, actually it's not a real case, right? So usually our, data block 0, 1, 2 uh, will be allocated to uh, super block, I, I know the map, uh, data block map and so on. But to make it simple here, just uh, just give you some numbers so we can play, right? So is question clear? Huh? Huh? Is the question clear? Hello, guys. Can you guys see the example slides? Okay, yeah. So now let's look at, suppose we want to find the uh, directory under root, we want to find the file one, right? So this is exactly the question I asked before, but now let's look at the whole uh, process, okay. So basically, uh, what is the content of block zero? <laughs> so the question is a kind of a strange, right? What is the content of a block zero, right? Huh? So, so let's go back to our our uh, 
whole structure, right? Think about that, okay? Because the root, root directory is a special file, right? Think about that. Then inode is zero, right? We start from inode zero because when we, if we want to find the corresponding inode for file one, we have to start from root directory, which is a uh, inode zero, right? Then inside inode zero, we know for this uh, root directory, it only occupy the content, file content only occupy one data block. And uh, the data block number is zero for root directory, right? So this is why we go back to what is the content of a block zero, which means what is the content of root directory, right? So this is the content of the root directory. We have dot, the root number, uh, the I know number is zero. We have a parent directory of the root directory, as we mentioned, which should be root directory also. So we have zero again. The DR1 is one, DR1, is, DR2 is two, right? Because we already talked about the thing. So our, my next question, what is the content of uh, block one? Have you guys uh, give me the answer for the block one? You, you can directly use uh, my screen. Right? Welcome to use the screen. You can draw directly here. Anyone want to make a try? So do, do you understand my question? What is the content, right? What is the content of a block one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Monkey is uh, doing it, right? It's not easy to draw, right? You can see, <laughs> right? So you have DRR one. File three. Huh? Oh, file file then three. Oh, the so basically you want to like uh, this is a kind of file name, right? This is a file name. This part is the I know number, right? One and three. How about dot and dot dot? Yeah, dot, 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 zero, zero, huh? So, uh, zero, one, okay. Dot, dot is one. Uh, um, yeah, so, oh, you remove this one, okay. <laughs> we don't have DR1. So, DR1 is our uh, directory file. So, basically, in under this directory, right? So we only remember all those files under this directory. So we have file one, okay? That's great, right? File one, the I know number. So we already given I know number file one, right? File one, this is a file one, right? I know number is three, right? Great, okay? But uh, how about those numbers? Dot means what, huh? Dot means my current directory. What is my current directory? DR1, right? Now what is the current directory number, right? So I think some students have me. <laughs> so it's kind of, you destroy this evidence. Okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, this number should be one, right? This number should be one, right? Is that one, right? Directory one. I know number is one, right? Then uh, what is the parent? Parent is zero, right? So, okay, so one, zero, three, right? So here is a dot, 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 then dot, dot, file one. Okay, we, we only have three entries. Then basically we have a corresponding I know number, okay? Then again, go back to our how to find this, okay? So we first go to, 
uh, I know basically suppose user given this one, right? Then we first go to root root directory, root directory, which we know I know number is zero. Then find the corresponding I node. Then from I node, then find the corresponding uh, data block to store the content, which is block zero. Then go there, map dr1, right? Map dr1. Oh, we found the dr1. So, oh, dr1, the inode number is one. Okay, then go back to the inode region, find the inode number one. Okay, then read the inode into memory, find out, oh, the inode for inode number one, which is for directory dr1. The file content is stored into data block one. Okay, then read data block one's content into memory. Then do mapping for file one. Search file one inside this uh, content of directory file direct, directory dr one. So file content. Then we find this entry. Okay, file one. The inner number is three. So basically, we return. Three, finish, okay? Then after we finish, then we go back to the previous uh, slides here. You think about, okay? So basically at that moment, we can go here. We can go here, right? We can go here to read. Okay, where's my, I, I don't have that example, right? Oh, the example here. Then basically we can read this inode into the memory and correspondingly we read all those uh, data block uh, if we need, or we need uh, some indirect, uh, data in the data block to store indirect pointer or uh, data pointer, then we read into memory. Then correspondingly, we find the which data block we should read. Then we find the data okay, for file one. So that's whole story. So uh, at this moment, I think uh, I finished most part of uh, today's lecture. Okay. Uh, but uh, maybe, yeah, another issue I want to talk about is maybe second question is that, okay? Yeah. So this is another associated question uh, related to your homework. And also uh, in your project, you, you may need to implement is that, suppose this one, this is exactly what I discussed, okay? But I want, I see in, in, the, in the question, I have to ask you in a more deterministic manner. Right? I want you giving me a, a definitive answer, right? So basically that answer must be deterministic. So basically I, I will ask you in order to obtain the inode number of F1, the sequence of the inode number and the data block numbers we want to pass. Okay, starting from the root directory, right? So basically, can, can you guys uh, provide the answer for me here? Suppose I want, so basically the question is in order to obtain the inode number of F1, the sequence of the inode number and the data block number we need to pass. So certainly we need, uh, I think we will start from, uh, I know the zero, right? So after I know zero, then what is next? Huh? Data block, which one? Zero, right? Because we need the content, data block zero for this I know the, the file content stored for root directory is in data block zero, okay? Then from data block zero, after we do the matching, we find the DR1's inode, which is inode one, right? Then from here, inside this inode, we know the mapping, where the file content stored for DR1. Then we find the uh, uh, data block one, right? Then from data block one, then we find the corresponding mapping for file one, which is inode 
uh, what is corresponding I node for phi one is three, right? So we find I node three. Okay, basically that's the answer, right? So you can see that's uh, that's the answer I expect, right? Uh, I know zero data block zero, I know one data block one, then go to I know three, right? Okay, we still have uh, some times. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I will, I will go to talk about those things later, basically, uh, go through an example because we don't have uh, enough time today, okay? Uh, then uh, let me answer some questions. So any questions at this moment? Yeah, I think one student, uh, one student uh, gave the answer, right? For, for the sequence, right? So uh, any other questions? So everything clear today? Huh? No question? <laughs> so I know part is very clear, directory part, huh? So congratulations, that, that means uh, you know um, uh, how to solve 50% of your homework too, because the homework too, basically. Uh, one question is related to this. Okay, another question is related to, um, related to this question, okay. Uh, then uh, later tutor will talk about this, okay, again. Okay, in order to help you to finish uh, on paper homework. Okay. So uh, if you guys don't don't have question, maybe let me go through uh, some slides, just uh, review. Maybe next week we can review those concepts, right? So uh, then free space. How to manage free space, right? So as uh, we mentioned before, remember we have inode bitmap and data block be map, right? Remember our data, our uh, our our disk layout is start with super block, SB, super block, right? Then we have inode bit map. Then we have data block bit map, right? So then we have inode region, then we have data region. So this is the data uh, disk layout, our hard disk layout, okay? So then, of course we need to keep track, right? We need to, file system need to track which inode and the data block I free or not, okay? The reason is that when we create a new file, Think about that. When you when we create a new file, we have to allocate a inode, free inode. Then we need to check this uh, bitmap. So bitmap is very simple. Basically, for each inode, we have one bit here to represent whether or not this inode is free. Okay. So so usually our argument is to find the first uh, available inode from this bitmap, which is a kind of bit comparison. Okay, find the first zero. Then we allocate this inode. Change it, become available, change it, uh, become uh, allocated, which means not free anymore, okay? Then allocated this inode to the file, just newly created. So that's the whole process. Right? Okay, then later when we say, okay, we want to delete a file from file system, then we will go to, because when we delete the file, we have to know the item number, right? For this particular file, right? So we will say, oh, this inode is free, okay? Then basically set up this uh, inode to be free, for example, Maybe we set up this bit as zero, right? When we allocate the meta, it become one, okay? Then this inode become zero is free. Then we go, go to this inode, then depends on the policy. Sometimes 
when we directly release all space. Okay, most of the time, maybe we will say because we, we have we have uh, uh, we have we have space. Then oh, maybe people will uh, nature will say oh, I made a mistake. Okay, I wrongly delete a file. Can I uh, restore my file? Okay, so basically we don't really delete this file. We only uh, set a flag for this inside this inode. Say, oh, this inode, okay. Basically this, uh, this one uh, is kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, is deleted, right? Then, then of course in that case, actually we cannot uh, free this inode. Maybe we still need to set up this inode is one, right? Only when we really delete this inode, then basically we, we, we release this, okay? So this is the why. This is why you can see that in in ESC in um, in uh, ext two inode, then uh, we have um, delete. I remember where is that? How should we use this inode? Uh, and where I, I I remember we have a delete one. Uh, this is a group time. This is related to the size. This is a property. Uh, this is a group. A link, right? Link also is very important. Uh, how many data blocks? Flags. Yeah. So uh, I think maybe this is uh, this one we can we can use as. Do I have Do I have that uh, Do I have that delete flag? I don't have, but maybe this is a flag. Okay, we can we can use this flag to remember this file is deleted, but not uh, really removed from system. Okay, basically, yeah. But but somehow this is a feature of a file system we we can use. Okay, uh, I I guess that's uh the the time is up. Okay, so I have to stop. So any questions at this moment? Yeah, so uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, this is all for today's lecture. If you want to, uh, if you want to continue for the Q A section, uh, then uh, you you can welcome. Okay, otherwise you can leave. So I I see some questions here, some good questions. So I will I will go back to top, uh, answer those questions. Right. So let me first copy those questions. Yeah, I think this is a very good question. I think you guys are very, very, very good. Okay, just uh, ask a very good question. Yeah. So let, let me answer those questions. So first, let me copy the question onto the whiteboard. So can you guys see the whiteboard right now? And the question? Huh? Have you guys see it? Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so uh, the question is, I think it's one, right? I know, yeah, I think this is the one question I ask. So isn't the I know the number inside the data block one? Yeah, so you are right, okay? You are right, okay? You are right. So given the case, right, given the example, Given the example in the uh, in the slides, right? I node should be. I I actually is not in data block one. Actually, is uh, is in data block two, right? I node one is in data block two. Data block data block two because we have super block, right? We have super block. We have I node map. I node map. Then we have a, a block map, data block map. Then we go to inode region, right? So we start from three, right? Data block three. But in this example, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, I, we have assumption, okay? We have assumption, I just assume, okay? We have very simple case, yeah. Then uh, if we somehow say, oh, this is our inode region, this is our data block, then data block is start from zero and so on. So 
This is based on assumption. But uh, you are right. In reality, inode, super block, uh, bitmap, I store the in data block also. Okay, we divide into in, into the data blocks. Of course, we have region called data region. Uh, in that region, we use to store data. In other region, we use the store um, inode and so on. Yeah, this is a, our this example only for assumption. Okay, so uh, is this clear? I hope I answer your question. Yeah, so maybe I change that slides. Okay, so you guys can have a better understanding of this case. Yeah. Any other questions? What if we delete a file? Any action? Uh, I think uh, another question is a very good question also. Uh, yeah, what if we delete a file? What, what kind of action we should uh, do? Right. So basically the question is like this. Let, let me copy this question. Yeah. yeah, so... Yeah, I somehow I didn't copy this question yet. So basically the question is, uh, uh, what action should we do for those files to be deleted, right? So what do we think? Huh? So of course here, let's, let's assume, okay, we directly deleted this file from system, right? So what action we should do? First thing, right? Of course, we if we really delete this file, right? We should uh, remove the, the, I mean, this is a really delayed file, right? The link becomes zero, right? Think about that. Then we should remove the entry from the directory. Then we should uh, release release our inode. We should release inode. Actually, also include including all data block associated. Right, all those data blocks should be see allocated should be free now. Okay, then we should uh, set our inode set the inode to be free, set the inode to be free. Right. So of course here, this assumption is that basically we directly delete the file, right? So we don't say that, oh, you delete file, you still can uh, restore this file later, but uh, this is a really delete the file. Okay. But if you want to keep this file temporarily after you delete, then, uh, then you need to do, um, uh, other other things. Okay. So uh, I, I, I noticed another student asked another question is really, how about the delete a directory file? <laughs> then what do you think? Uh, I think it's a similar, right? You think about that. Direct, first thing you need to handle, if you want to delete a directory, what does that mean? Uh, all files under this directory, should be deleted, right? <laughs> so you, you either allow this to happen or you don't allow, right? So usually we, you, you have a uh, option, you have parameter. We can say, I, I want to uh, enforce to delete uh, this directory. Uh, also include all files under this directory, right? Then in that case, then you have to recursively Go to each uh, subdirectory, then delete all files correspondingly. Then go back to this directory. After all files under this directory have been deleted, then you can delete this directory file. Delete this directory file itself is very simple, right? Basically, you just remove this inode from the his parent directory, and that, that file name and the inode, that entry and that mapping from the directory file. And also, of course, relate, release the directory file inode, uh, then uh, 
uh, make it free and so on, right? Okay, yeah, I hope I answered the question, yeah. My question is ignored. I guess there is some problem. So, so what is your question? What is your question? Yeah. I, I think once one student see that his question is ignored. I I oh, I, I think I already answer. Delete a file and delete a directory file, right? So, um, yeah. Let me copy those questions, okay? My question is, I guess there's some problem with your copy. So can you guys see the, can you guys see the whiteboard? And the question? Yeah, so is that uh, include the question you asked? Hello? Yes, okay, yeah. Now, let's see, okay. What about delete? Uh, my question is, you know, I think I already talked about the deletion. Some sorting inside direction, all oh, the new entry just fill in the block. So, I mean, this is totally depends on uh, design, right? Uh, general idea is that uh, the simplest strategy, I think you are, I think you ask about the how to find a new entry, right? For the uh, how to find the new inode or new data block, right? New inode or a new data block, right? So, uh, basically, um, first, available algorithm is uh, good enough in this case, because uh, generally speaking, we will just go through it and then find it, okay? So of course, if you want to have some fancy one, then you have to find whether or not it's needed, right? Yeah. Uh, in terms of sorting and so on, those issues, basically there's no sorting, right? Think about that. We don't have a, we don't have sorting, right? So uh, if, if your question is how to find a new free inode, how to find a free inode or free, it's not new, it's a free, right? Free inode or free data block. Then uh, basically we, we only have an array over there that is a bitmap, right? It just goes through bitmap to find the first uh, available, okay? I hope I answer your question, right? It's only, see, okay, so what, what do you think, okay? What, what is the purpose for super block? Huh? Basically, for each file system, only have one super block, right? One super block for a file system. Right? So because this, this is a information we need to know where is our inode bitmap block, where is our data block bitmap, where is our inode region, where is our data block region? That's it, okay? This is a whole file system layout, okay? We only need one. It's not related to the file, right? Then, then we file here is uh, go to inode. We basically, our file system is very simple, right? We only have inode and the data region. Inode region, data region, that's it, okay? I hope I answer, answer your question. For the directory, indirect pointer in the inode block, they are follow the same. So in, we know the data block exactly the content block. Actually, I, I don't I don't answer Anthony's question. So what what's what's your question? Can you can you uh happy to answer to understand your question? Oh, I mean I mean the the about the I have a question about the multi level pointers. Okay. So the pointer is stored in. Uh, in, in in which part? I, I'm not very sure. I mean, if you start in the I, I not block, then maybe you have some uh, indirect pointer. Then, see, see, okay. Yeah. I think you have some misunderstanding here, Anthony. Okay, think about that. 
basically I know that I know that it's a fixed date structure, right? That we only have 60 bytes inside the inode. That is used to used to for mapping, right? Then we have an inode region, right? So what what's your so I I, I don't understand the inode block. So what what's uh, they all follow the same arrangement? So see, I I, I think maybe you misunderstand this part. Basically, see, this is our inode, right? This is an inode region. We have a lot of inodes. Inode zero, inode one, inode two, inode three, and so on, right? So yeah, but but what if the directory have uh have you know you have to read the content from directory, right? Yeah, directory yeah. also is an inode. Okay, directory file also has an inode, right? Directory, directory file is not a special. Okay, directory also has the inode. Directory also is a file. If we have a file, then it has the inode, right? Uh, so is that possible? You have indirect pointer to, uh, to to store the content for the directory file. Yeah, it's possible if if we have a huge very large directory. But yeah, so this directory contain a lot of files, right? It's possible, right? Yeah, but uh, see, in reality, it's impossible, right? <laughs> right? Think about that. We have how many? Like EXT2, we have, we have, uh, we already reserve 12 data block, the, uh, the 12 direct pointer, which means 12 plus four kilobytes. So we already have 48 kilobytes. Okay, use this for 48 kilobytes to store the mapping. Then how many files under this directory we can have? So it's uh, so many, okay, it's impossible in reality, right? We, we can over this uh, 48 kilobytes and go to the indirect pointer, right? Enter okay, yeah, okay. but, uh, but uh, uh, you are right, I... you are right. So suppose you, suppose, uh, Suppose you have such kind of a directory, right? It's, yes, we will go to indirect pointer. Okay, that find it. But it's okay, yeah. Because say, okay, if you have so many, uh, so many files under this directory, then what can we do, right? Basically, we have to use the indirect, indirect pointer, yeah. yeah so yeah, actually, I, my, my yeah. question is more or less like, uh, how you distinguish about the direct and indirect pointer? Like, if, I, if I, will not, I will not in, see, oh, that's my point. Okay, that's my point. Okay, Anthony, we will not distinguish. Okay, we will only see, okay, your file, if your file size over this size, right? So think about oh, that. Oh, I see, I see. No. Th this Actually, is your file size, right? So but you do example, store the file, uh, the size in the previous example. So I, I sort of, uh, uh, ignore that 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 part. But if you mention that uh, now, I I can understand. Yeah. 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 So so basically, file size, right? File. So we don't do anything, right? Basically, is a. So this oh. is a, I mentioned the last time. Basically, this is a mapping linear mapping, right? So our file is uh, recognized as a linear space. So we have a first four kilobytes, the second four kilobytes, a third four kilobytes, and so on. Then first one go to the first entry. In our mapping, yeah. second, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. That, that, that if you naturally you go to that uh, indirect pointer area, then you go to find it, right? The offset, yeah. Very good question. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I see. Yeah. You are calm. Yeah. So I think I, I answer Anthony's question, but uh, looks like uh, we have more questions now. Probably a Google server or something. Like that. Okay. Yeah. So let let me copy more question here. Okay, thank you guys. I think you guys are very good to give me a lot of questions. Uh, yeah, but uh, somehow my my system is not. Uh, yeah, let, let me let me restart this. Let, let me see. Okay, we have more interesting question. I I think Anthony asked a very good question. Okay. 
Yeah, so maybe I didn't make it clear about this, uh, how, how we do this mapping. Uh, for direct, yes. I mean, when we delete a file, there must be some block in the table, right? Some blocks in the table, which, ta which table? Yeah, so yes, okay. So I think maybe you are talking about inode region, right? Uh, or this data region, right? Uh, it's okay. So when we delete a file, when we delete a file, then basically uh, we will go to the, this is why we need inode bitmap, that block and the data block data bitmap region, right? Then we just set those, uh, so so basically we'll say, oh, that this inode is uh, uh, available, free. This uh, data block is free, it's just set those bit correspondingly. I'm not sure, is this your question? Or maybe not? Yeah, it's okay, we have some uh, black or uh, I, empty. I mean, that area is uh, available to be reused. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Liu Jian Fu, okay, ask question. So find a free, I know it's order N. Yes, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay, you guys are very good uh, computer scientists. Okay, always uh, talk about the complexity. Okay, yes, order N. So the size of a super block is very small. Yes, okay. Super block is very small. Okay, usually we only have one, um, one block, right? At most, okay. Maybe sometimes they don't need one block for the super block, yeah. It's good enough. Because this, think about that. This uh, super block, we don't need to store a lot of information. Indirect uh, block is in the data region. Yes, yes, great. Yeah, so yeah, I think uh, Ken Long, this is a comment, right? So four terabytes directory from uh, Google server or something. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, if we need then it's okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah, is that possible for the I know data block point to the non-consecutive data block? Um, of course, uh, it's possible. Yeah, maybe maybe let, let me copy the last two question. Is that possible? Yeah, somehow I didn't copy this. Point two. I, I think I didn't copy the, the question clearly, correctly. Yeah. Cool. Let, let me go back. Huh? So how many students I, I have here? Yeah. Basically, I think to answer your question, I think one question is that um, so some space inside the data block for the super block is visited. Yeah. I think one student see that. It's okay to waste some space because it's only one data block, right? I I also agree. Yeah, so it's okay because it's one time stuff. Okay. Yeah. So uh is that another question is related to is that possible? Is that possible for the inode data pointer point to non-consecutive data blocks? Uh, definitely it's possible, right? Because when we allocate data, maybe maybe multiple files ask for the space, then we definitely we should have this kind of situation. Yeah. Okay. I I I, I don't see because this uh, this is only one question. I don't uh, I will not copy the question, but uh, yes, it's okay. Yeah. So uh, did I answer your question? Okay, uh, any other questions? Uh, today we have a very good discussion, okay. Yeah, 
So I, I guess that's all for today's lecture and also the um, QA session. Okay. Uh, today we also have a lab. Okay. Don't forget the lab, which is very important. Okay. So uh, if data, so I think one, what, what do you mean the data are non consecutive? So uh, how do we make sure data are in order? Okay, so basically the, the question is that how to make sure we will store our data. So this is from user, right? User can save the data. You can allocate some space, then you can save the data. Then if you don't uh, uh, save the data, then it depends on Depends on the, uh, I, I, I think I understand your question. Yeah, so I, you are talking about like, uh, say, uh, suppose I, yeah, let, let me go back to your question, yeah. So I think this is a very good question. So it depends on the different, different file system, right? So this is related to the data block based. I think it's, it's okay. So uh, another question related to, uh, yeah, another question related to uh, King, King Long asked this question. How to, make, how to we make sure the data is in order, okay? So uh, we cannot, yeah. So then uh, suppose say, okay, if you open a file, then you directly want to Right to, uh, for example, four mega from that location to write. Then, how to handle the first four mega? Uh, it depends on uh, a different file system. You can see that I allow this to happen, right? Then we do have some empty uh, location. This part is empty. I don't allocate any space for you. Then I directly allocate some data block, right? Oh, you can see that. If you want to write over there, then you have we have to allocate some space. Okay, we allocate some data block, even you don't use it. Okay, we allocate. It depends on a different system. Okay, how to handle this? But uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, we usually write our data sequentially. Okay, into the file. Okay, so basically. Uh, we will allocate the space and so on. Then, then if you don't follow this order, then uh, depends on different system to handle this. But we only have two ways. We either allow you to have this kind of uh, unallocated space, or we allocate the space, even you don't use it, right? So did I answer your question? Okay, uh, yeah, I guess that's all for today. Okay, thank you guys. Well, don't forget today's lab and uh, see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.